So we're continuing on with our discussion of astrology as a mystic path and how to work with each of the planets as though we are learning to embody their highest qualities because the planets themselves, as we've discussed in the previous videos within this series, the planets themselves represent an aspect of what we are. They're not separate from us. Just like we have all the different organs within our body playing a particular role so that the body can function, each of the planets play a particular role so that we can have a holistic experience in this life. It's one of the main reasons why we aren't going to get very far by demonizing malefic planets or celebrating benefic planets because they each play their role. And today we're gonna to be discussing the planet Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is a planet often associated with religion and spirituality. And so Jupiter is one of those um, qualities of ourselves that really needs to be developed in order to appreciate a mystical experience or to appreciate spiritual growth within this life. Now, we're going to be using a reference, um, The Art and Science of Vedic Astrology, Volume 2, because within this book, uh, when I wrote it, um, I, I really wrote it for myself so that I could have this you know, reference material available at all times. But in the very back of the book, in the appendix, um, there are indicators or karaka ships for each of the planets, what each planet represents within each divisional chart, the Rashi, the Hora, the Sumsha. Also, there is lists and discussions of what each planet represents as it relates to a particular house. Um, so the Vargas, the houses, the planets all mean something in particular in each one of these things. But for our purposes today, we're going to be referencing um, Jupiter's influence as it relates to the Rashi, the D1, which is your primary birth chart. And what are the indications of Jupiter? Well, Jupiter is said to represent opportunities, wealth, children, wisdom, the husband, banks, the guru, the sense of hearing, the ether element, lipids and fats, it's an insulator for prana. Um, it has a primary rulership over the endocrine system and an influence on the reproductive system. Jupiter is one of those planets that if it is well-placed within your chart, it is more likely that you will benefit from counsel, any kind of counsel. But for our purposes, it's more likely that you will benefit from uh, astrological counsel. But I have found that when people have um, Jupiter in trines, supported by friends as related to Lajitadya Vashtas, in good dignity, in good dignity throughout the Vargas, with a strong influence to the Ascendant Lord, or really the moon as well, um, that people tend to get more out of things like astrology. And Jupiter is related to um, the god Ganesh, Shiva's son, Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. Jupiter is related to the Om vibration, which is related to Ganesh, which is um, spoken of in the Yoga Sutras, not Ganesh, but the Om vibration. And that by contemplating the Om vibration, all obstacles to realization are removed. So one of the primary reasons that Jupiter, Ganesh, uh, the contemplation of Om are so important when it comes to astrology is number one, for the individual looking for an astrological session, if you have developed your Jupiter, you will tend to find better astrologers. You'll just be naturally drawn towards them because you have the merit to get good counsel. But on the other hand, I've seen this happen again and again, um, even if you end up finding an astrologer that's not that good, because your Jupiter is so good, um, you are able to understand and pick out, well, 
what did that astrologer say, which is actually true and applicable to me? So I've often found that people who have um, really well-placed Jupiters, they can go almost to any astrologer. And if the astrologer has a little bit of skill, then the resonance of the client's Jupiter calls forth that skill. And then they end up getting a good reading, a good um, astrological session. And I found people who've had profoundly difficult Jupiters, and they can go from one astrologer to the next, from the most worldly celebrated astrologer to the one that everyone gets wonderful advice from to the one that isn't very good at all. And they never get good advice or they never hear the good advice because Jupiter is related to ether and the ability to hear. And that's not just, can you hear sounds? It's, are you able to hear what is meaningful? Are you able to hear what is meaningful? Uh, so this is one of the reasons why I um, don't always recommend astrology for everybody, because if, if, you, if you don't have a positive Jupiter and you're not willing to work on your Jupiter, because it takes a while, so it's not going to be something that you say, great, I'm going to crank out some Jupiter mantras in the next six months, and then every astrology session from this point forward is going to be fantastic. But if you're able to do mantras for Jupiter or mantras for Ganesh or prayers to Ganesh or um, learning to meditate on embody um, the ohm vibration and, and sink your awareness into it, you will tend to get better information from an astrologer. Along with that, you will also tend to get better information from any of your counselors, from your financial counselor, from your doctors, um, from your accountants, anyone who gives you advice, even, even uh, uh, mental health counselors. So working with Jupiter, uh, working with Ganesh, learning to chant Om and practice the, the Om technique where you can hear the Om vibration. What this does is it amplifies that energy, that quality of Jupiter within you. So you know what is good information. You know what is true. Oftentimes people associate Jupiter um, with religious fanatics when it's too strong in the chart. Well, it depends on how Jupiter is set up. It can be too strong and maybe starved by Venus or Mercury or Saturn. And when it's starved by its enemies, then we tend to get experiences of Jupiter like a religious fanatic or someone who's way overboard with their orthodox beliefs. But a good, strong Jupiter um, is spiritual, is religious in the best sense of the word. To be spiritual and religious in the best sense of the word is essentially to um, be able to understand and uh, live by the principles of yoga, which will apply to other religions and religious traditions too. So you have to have an open mind in order to see where they interlock and a good Jupiter will be able to do that. Um, for example, practicing truth, truthfulness, uh, not having, not being possessive of anything, of an ideal, of a person, of a thing, um, of a religion, thinking yours is better than another's, that's the type of possession. Um, practicing contentment, practicing surrender, um, being able to see the innate spirit in all beings, no matter what they look like or what creeds they profess. This is, a, this is Jupiter, because Jupiter sees the bigger picture, sees how everything and everyone fits into this divine drama. Uh, oddly enough, they often, or it's been said in, in certain astrological texts that Jupiter doesn't speak much. So when, when, when we find Jupiter in the second house, many people say, oh, you must talk a lot because Jupiter is an expansive energy. But Jupiter doesn't necessarily if he's doing a good job because he knows that silence in silence is vastness. And usually when Jupiter is doing well, a person only speaks when they know they have something to offer that's appropriate to the person or the situation. They're not just going to do it just to hear themselves talk or just to prove a point, which most of the time <laughs> we don't need to do those things anyway. Uh, but back to this idea of, of Jupiter and uh, mysticism, 
and the mysticism of astrology. Well, number one, first and foremost, any practices which develop Jupiter in your life, whether it be uh, prayers, mantra, worship towards Ganesh. That's, that's why so many astrologers um, speak of Ganesh as being like the patron saint using that kind of terminology of astrology. Uh, these types of things strengthen, strengthen your Jupiter. But how do we live our life such that it reflects the qualities of Jupiter. That's the big thing. When it comes down to all this mysticism and all of this spiritual uh, practice, it's not locking yourself away and chanting mantras until you're exhausted or um, just to say you've chanted 186,000 of them. The real mystical path is about integrating the entirety of our experience. That's the path of yoga. That's the path of mysticism. That's the path of all authentic spiritual traditions. So there's no escape from everything that we do. We have to pay attention to everything that we do. So Jupiter deals with things like wealth and resources. Well, we know from the Yoga Sutras that one of the qualities, one of the yamas and niyamas, which from the Yoga Sutras are said to be the great vow of a yogi, the great vow of a yogi, which are at which are applicable. These things, the yamas and niyamas, are applicable no matter what time, place, circumstance. Even one of the words in Sanskrit indicates plane of existence. So, no matter what time, place, circumstance, or plane of existence you're on, uh, these great vows, the yamas and niyamas, are to be followed because they're to serve as the foundation, the basis for everything. So, what is one of the yamas and niyamas that deals specifically? with this idea of Jupiter as it relates to wealth. Well, wealth comes in many, many forms. Um, we often think of wealth as gold or money or things of that nature, but your health is wealth. Your time is wealth. Um, people talk about how they're lonely and, and confined due to the current state of the world. Um, and they, they wish they could just get out there and do things. Well, their emotional nature might be suffering now, but if they went out and, and contracted some disease or a virus where they couldn't act effectively or efficiently in the world, um, well, then their, their resources would greatly diminish because not only would their mental health go downhill from there, but so would their physical health. And that's harder to recover from. So you want to work on one thing at a time. And from the perspective of um, Jupiter and the practice of brahmacharya, which means having all of your desires towards a higher purpose or going like God, going like Brahma, the desires of Brahma. Well, what do we do? We manage our resources well. And those resources are what? Our health, our time, um, our, our finances. All these things are important to manage. And when we appreciate value, the exchange of energy with ourselves, with others, we are practicing brahmacharya, which is supporting Jupiter. When we are being responsible with our finances, meaning if we need to go out and get a job to pay our bills, we do it. We don't worry about is it in line with our greater purpose and so on. We do what we can to uh, provide for ourselves. Then we build up from there. Um, if we need to work on our health, if we need to take up an exercise routine or eat uh, a healthier diet, this is useful because this will strengthen our energy. Jupiter is said to be an insulator for prana. It, it helps to hold prana. So anything that holds our life force, holds um, our vital essence, holds our resources, this is related to Jupiter. So from a very basic level, Jupiter requires of us to take care of our resources. Again, referring back to the yamas and niyamas, purity is listed as one of them. Now, in the definition from the Yoga Sutras, purity is essentially said to be that which keeps the body healthy and keeping away that, was, that which is adverse to the body's health. And that's not just the physical body, that's the mental body, the emotional body, the psychological body, the psychic body. So anything we do to manage our life so that we are able to protect our form not to glorify our form. So please hear what I'm saying because the Yoga Sutras, it's not telling you that to glorify the form. 
It's telling you that because when you have a healthier form, when you have abundant resources, it's much easier for you to sit down and meditate because you're not worried about uh, the issues of the body. You're not stressed out about the fact that you can't afford a new roof and it's about ready to fall in on you. Um, you're not stressed out about the fact that you waste all of your time with people who are just a drain in your life. If you are practicing brahmacharya, if you are practicing purity, then you are going to strengthen this quality of Jupiter and then you will have more wealth. You will have more time. You will have more health. And eventually you get in such a pattern that it just naturally grows because each choice that you make leads to more and more and more. I've known people who've told me that when they've spent their entire life saving and living on a budget instead of being frivolous with their money, that they reach a point where they're able to pay off their car, they're able to pay off their house. And then they say, it's just stupid the amount of money that you end up accumulating because you're not spending on everything. And this would be an approach of a healthy-minded Jupiter because you see, Jupiter enjoys life. Jupiter is enjoyment. So the better a person's Jupiter is, often the happier they are. And often I've seen in people's charts where they have a brilliant, beautiful Jupiter. Again, in trines or well-dignified in an angle, um, supported by friends through Lajitadya Vashtas, good Shadbala, good throughout the Vargas. These are the kinds of people that they might not have much of anything, but they're happy because they appreciate what they do have. Again, referring back to the Yoga Sutras, um, non-stealing, that's one of the yamas and niyamas as well. Um, well, it's said that when one is established in non-stealing, all wealth is provided. And non-stealing is what? It's not craving what you don't have. And Jupiter is happy with what it has. Jupiter is happy with what it has. And if the astrological chart says you're going to have a yacht and own an island or have all the leisure time in the world, you're happy with it. And there are plenty of people who have those things that aren't. If your chart says that you're going to be working 40 to 60 hours a week um, in a job that's more service oriented, that um, doesn't give you all of the, the thrills and perks of other types of jobs, and your Jupiter is, is good, you'll be happy with it because you'll appreciate what you do have and what you can do in the world. So this leads us to another one of the uh, yamas and niyamas from the practice of yoga, which is uh, contentment. It's said in the, the, um, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, when one is established in contentment, there is unexcelled happiness. Now, throughout the Yoga Sutras, it doesn't say when you get the perfect partner, the perfect house, the perfect job, um, the perfect health, then there will be unexcelled happiness. It doesn't say that in there. It talks about contentment as a practice on its own. So people who have a, a well-integrated Jupiter, they will be able to be content. So part of the practice to strengthen one's Jupiter, to integrate one's Jupiter, is to do whatever it takes to begin experiencing contentment. Now, I wish I didn't have to always backtrack with things like this, but due to the nature of uh, this audience, um, we are talking to people of different understandings. And I'm not at all saying if you are in an abusive, difficult, belittling, um, terrible situation that you should just sit there and be content. There's nothing wrong with uh, having inspiration. As, as we saw early on, when we talked about the sun in the mystic path, the sun is about seeing what you can do. Where can you go? What is your inspiration? How can you work towards that? So if you want to think about these other things, please go back and, and re-listen to the talks on um, Mars and the mystic path, because Mars will definitely help you kick through some problems, overcome some obstacles, the sun and the mystic path. Those are the planets that, that you need to deal with uh, the experiences of life where you might be having problems so that you can see something greater and move into it. But what we're talking about here is Jupiter. And Jupiter is, we're assuming that you have integrated or are integrating, working on these other planetary influences that are a part of you, such that you can now start saying, you know what? I do have enough money now. You know what? 
I understand how to either be in a relationship or be alone if, if that's what I need in order to be content. Uh, I understand how to conserve my time and my resources so that I'm making the most of this life. And so now we're going to try to practice contentment for its own sake, contentment for its own sake. And this comes up again and again in spiritual texts about the practice of contentment. So as we see, as we contemplate working with Jupiter, most of, if not a lot of, um, the yamas and niyamas as listed in uh, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali help us to develop our Jupiter. But why is that? It's because it's helping us to develop our authentic spirituality, which really means what? It's helping to reveal to us the truth of our, our inner being, our, our inner pure nature. That's what it's doing. And, is, and the practice of yoga, it's all about removing obstacles. So again, here we go with this idea of Ganesh. Ganesh is the, the, the Lord of the remover of obstacles. Well, all through yoga in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, it speaks of the practice of yoga and specifically the practice of Kriya Yoga as that which removes the obstacles to realization, that which removes pain, which are obstacles to realization. So the more we practice yoga, the more we develop our Jupiter, the clearer we become, the more integrated it becomes, which means we can now relate appropriately to wealth. We can now relate appropriately uh, to our spouse. We can now relate appropriately um, to the, the management of our life force. Um, we can now hear things well. That's, that's the biggest thing. When you develop your Jupiter, most people who have a good Jupiter don't need astrology. I've found that to be the case almost all of the time because they will tend to be led to the next thing that they need to go to. Why? Because they're listening, because they've developed that capacity to hear a Jupiter issue, which requires days and hours and years and months practicing meditation and prayer so that you can learn to listen. What is the higher purpose here of this individual aspect of my life in the whole? And that takes a long time. And you make a lot of mistakes along the way, but eventually you move into, which is one of the other, another one of the yamas and niyamas, um, surrender in, surrender to something bigger than you, surrender to the divine, surrender to uh, Ishvara, which is the wholeness. I consider it to be the bigger you, which you are a part of or an expression of. And when you're able to surrender to that through the consistent practice of these things we've discussed, um, you just tend to make the right decisions. You tend to be able to say, well, which way should I go in this situation? You can wait. And you know, I'm going to go this way. And you know that if you make a mistake, it's not necessarily a mistake. It's just something you're there to add to your sense of understanding. So many times when I, I see people with, with wonderful Jupiters, in my experience, I barely even have to research their chart. In fact, I, don't, I probably don't even have to, but I do anyway, because um, I just like to do my work um, to be thorough. But I can remember plenty of times early on when um, maybe I was running behind or I'd even, I'd even miscalculated the chart. Uh, in, in my early days of astrology, I put in like the wrong number. Or I got a, a number backwards. And they said, no, that's not my, that's not my breath information. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, good goodness, what, what, what do I do? Well, I guess I'm just going to have to do it. <laughs> I'm going to try. And if they don't like it, well, then I guess we'll reschedule and I'll do it again. But I found that when people had a wonderful Jupiter and that happened, it was just like I looked at the chart and it opened up like a book that I could read easy and naturally. I just knew exactly which line to read to them and speak to, uh, speak to them about. So oftentimes people with a good Jupiter don't really need astrology. But if you have difficulties with Jupiter, meaning that um, the wisdom you get from your spiritual teacher or the wisdom you get from your astrologer just doesn't seem to work out to you, or you, you just can't quite understand it, or it, it doesn't quite, you never feel like it's quite right for you. Well, that's an indication you need to work on your Jupiter, probably first and foremost. At least get it to a middling level so that you can benefit from the wisdom and guidance of a skilled astrologer or a guru or a teacher or a counselor. Um, but these are the things you have to do. Um, and what happens is once you do them, which is what happens to the practice of yoga in general, 
uh, or any authentic spiritual tradition that embodies a lot of these virtues, these virtuous qualities that we've discussed, is you start to appreciate the bigger picture of life. And you will even be able to integrate Saturn. So I can't wait till we get to Saturn because Saturn is just as important as Jupiter. Saturn is the planet of reality existing in this world. But when your Jupiter becomes strong, when your Jupiter becomes full, it's like, you know, you can handle what's going to happen. You're not like many people are afraid of every failure, afraid of being crushed by every little thing, afraid that you're not afraid that you're not going to be able to get up and continue onward. When your Jupiter is full and strong, you're full and strong of faith, with faith, which is what we want, which means that you're going to do what you need to do, and you're not afraid that it might go wrong, because if it goes wrong, you're just going to step back and say, all right, well, something about that needed to happen. So now I'm just going to go around it and keep moving forward. You're going to be able to see uh, the reality that, that Saturn shares with us of illness, death, poverty, restriction, not being able to get what we want. These are all human qualities and all of us are going to suffer from this because we're all human, obviously. Uh, we're here having this interaction. But when Jupiter is strong, you, don't, you aren't completely crushed when Saturn comes along because you are able to love and embrace Saturn because you see it from a bigger picture standpoint where you know death is important for regeneration, restarting things, making something new being able to start again. Um, illness in, in many spiritual texts is, is said to be one of the greatest blessings. Why? Because there's nothing like a good illness to drive you inward, to recognize that you are not this body, that you are not this form, that you are not this mind, that you are not this personality. You think you're all this, which is why you suffer. But when Saturn comes along and, and puts it in your face, he's not doing it just to grind you down. He's saying, look, this isn't really you, look within. And if your Jupiter is strong, you are expansive enough and you are courageous enough because Jupiter is a planet of courage, like the sun and like Mars. These are the masculine planets which deal with having courage to be able to look at what's going on and do what needs to be done. That's why they said, say when Jupiter's in the third house or uh, something like that, that, there's a lot more courage within a person's life because you see the challenges. This is a challenge. It's part of the greater whole, not oh crap, another challenge, please stay away. That there's a strength, a healthy masculinity there that is wanting the challenge to grow and become stronger. Uh, so anyway, Jupiter gives you the bigger picture of you to see how each facet of yourself goes together, how the night goes together with the day, how the cold goes together with the heat, how the suffering goes together with the pleasure. And it's all from this greater vantage point so that you are not defined by any of it, but you're able to, to exist, experience, thrive within it, and know that it is all part of you. This is what Jupiter does. Um, Jupiter is joy, as I've mentioned. Um, we're not meant to be here in life to be little cowards. Um, and as I mentioned, it's a healthy kind of masculinity. A healthy masculinity doesn't wanna go out and, and do these courageous things to say, hey, look at me, see how strong I am or it doesn't go out to crush other people to, to prove how strong it is. A healthy masculinity sees a challenge and just embraces it. Wow, this is a chance to grow. This is a chance to see what I know, how good I am. And if I get beat down, no problem. That's part of it. It's part of the game. So what is a wonderful way that you can also strengthen your Jupiter from, from a practical level? Start appreciating games challenge yourself, get outside and maybe learn to play soccer or basketball or softball or um, uh, pickleball or badminton. Just find a game that works for you and get in the spirit of good sportsmanship. Learn how to play the game, which means you learn how to accept defeat. You don't blame anyone else. You don't need to blame anyone else. You know, we're all in this together. And if someone else wins, you're happy for them. Within the Yoga Sutras, uh, there is a statement, I don't have it exactly right, and I don't have the paper in front of me. I don't have the sutras memorized, although I read them a lot. Uh, that essentially the yogi is elated with virtue um, and then practices neutrality where there is non-virtue. So when it comes to games and sports, what does this teach us when we learn to do it well? You learn to be elated with virtue. Someone 
beat you skillfully, celebrate them. You did a great job. That was fantastic, but I'll get you next time. Of course, that's Mars coming in. Um, but you don't, you don't become a baby about it and, and, and whine and throw your racket and these sorts of things, or you don't blame other people when things don't go your way. You look at all as like a, an ability to uh, embrace your courage and to just try and try again. And they're always going to be someone better than you. So uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about winning all the time. Um, but Jupiter gives the ability to have the opportunity to do that. And people who have more opportunities, why do they have more opportunities? Because they try more. They look around. They see more things that can be done. So learning to sit back and even ask yourself in your life, when you feel like you're up against the wall and that you can't do anything else and that um, there's, you know, Saturn's just crushing you and that's all you can see is Saturn. We well, have to sit back and just take a few deep breaths and expand your awareness and your consciousness and consider there's got to be another opportunity here. There's something else I can do. It might not be at all in line with what you had in mind for your little personality, but it's something brand new that you can do. And you go with it. You explore it. You try it. You just see what happens. Um, and then you find more opportunities. And then you go through your life and 5, 10, 15 years later, you look back and say, I had no idea I was going to end up here <laughs> because you were so locked into a narrow pattern. Of course, that's how many people fail and, and burn themselves out. But if you open up a little bit and when things don't go your way, you don't get beat up, you use your Jupiter and say, all right, well, let's look around. Obviously, there's something totally new here that I need to find and try it and try things. If you have a question about should you or should you, should you not do something, of course, we're talking about healthy questions, things that aren't going to hurt you. Um, well, if the question's bothering you, the answer to that is just go do it. You'll find out whether you should have done it or not. <laughs> um, uh, Ernst Wilhelm, you know him. Uh, he's the creator of the Kala Vedic Astrology Software, a wonderful um, astrologer and a, a good friend of mine. Uh, he would always say, uh, when, when, when people come to astrologers and they want to know exactly what they should do, they want to know what God wants them to do. He would always tell me, uh, what you say is, um, well, God will let you know if you should have done that after you do it. So how do you know if God wants you to do something? You do it. And then you see if it works. <laughs> and if you have a good Jupiter and you're happy and you're freer, you don't mind doing that. Um, just earlier today, I, I, I do some uh, ice bath immersions. Um, and uh, it's pretty cold sometimes down to, to freezing, but I like it. It feels good. It's a Saturn remedy for many of you who, who well, you probably already know that because of the iciness and the cold, which is a Saturn quality. Um, but I hadn't done it for a couple of weeks. Um, and I was debating, well, do I go back out in my tub? I just filled it up yesterday. It's probably around, uh, I don't know, close to zero degrees. Uh, like, should I, should I do it? And I was sitting there this morning trying to work that out. I thought to myself, you know what? Well, the only way I'm going to know if I should or shouldn't do it is if I go do it. Otherwise, I'm going to spend the rest of the day wondering, should I got in the tub this morning? Should I have done my regular routine? And what did I do? I said, fine. I got up, put my swim trunks on, walked outside, took the tarp off of my outdoor tub, sat myself in. It was cold. It felt good. I was in there for a few minutes. I got out. My question was answered. That was great. So I didn't have to think about it the rest of the day. Jupiter gives us the courage to try things without regret. If you've got a lot of regrets, work with Jupiter. Why? Jupiter also deals primarily with forgiveness. So any practice in which you are meditating on forgiving yourself, forgiving others, truly forgiving them, seeing them in the light of forgiveness and letting go of, of the wrongs that they have done to you and the results that that caused, this helps to strengthen your Jupiter. That will also help to free you from regrets free you from regrets. Regrets are one of the worst things which uh, bog down a person's Jupiter. Why? Because if you're full of regrets, you're definitely not going to be happy. Um, and Jupiter is expansion, optimism, seeing a possibility. Let's go try them. Let's go do that. Let's go see what this is all about. Not, well, that might not work. Well, that could hurt. Uh, that, that could be uncomfortable. I don't know about that. Jupiter is expansive. And that's why a person who has a strong Jupiter um, 
just seems to experience so much more in life because they're trying so much more in life. I mean, look around at nature and the amount of seeds that have to go out before you even get a tree, the amount of um, eggs that fish lay, how many of those actually turn into little fish that survive to adulthood? Not many. Nature is full of this experience of needing to give more and give more. And by the way, Jupiter rules over seeds. Give more and give more, but only a few come up. So if you've got a good Jupiter, you're able to, to, to do more without the expectation that everything that you do is going to work because you know, you know how nature works. You, you've got your Saturn integrated. So you know how reality works and you can appreciate that. You can enjoy that. Um, one of the, one of the things I love about Jupiter, and it's just my own little um, fetish, I guess. I love Rudraksha beads. Um, you, you know, the things that you count prayers with, this is associated with Jupiter, especially the five faceted ones. But er, when I was, first getting started in yoga, somehow I became aware of Rudraksha beads and collecting all the different faceted beads and how they are associated with planets. I love these things. Um, and I've always felt that they help to strengthen my Jupiter. And I only learned probably about 10 years after I began practicing astrology that seeds themselves are related to Jupiter. And that's what Rudraksha beads are. They're seeds. Um, so wearing Rudraksha beads, doing mantras and prayers with Rudraksha beads, chanting Om with Rudraksha beads, Ganesh mantras, uh, Brahaspate mantras, all these help to strengthen the arc field of Jupiter so that you can begin using that energy to live the way we described. None of this fancy esoteric stuff is going to magically make you change into a brilliant um, expression of the yamas and niyamas, but it gives you the energy to do it. So then you can say, all right, how can I practice contentment today? How can I practice non-possessiveness? How can I practice brahmacharya? Um, how can I practice truthfulness? How can I practice purity? It helps to empower that. But you still have to do the work. You still have to get rid of the habits that get in the way that prevent you from doing those things until they become stronger habits, until the yamas and niyamas become stronger habits than the um, other option. Okay, well, this is what you can do to consider how to work with Jupiter. Uh, from a, a mystic yet practical perspective, um, please, please, please try it. And take it slow, make a plan, make a plan over a year or two years to see how you can start slowly incorporating these things that we've discussed. And I think by the end of that time, you'll find um, that the expression of Jupiter, as you know it from astrology, as is listed in the Art and Science of Vedic Astrology, Volume 2, and so on, and other books, you'll find that you naturally benefit more from astrology. You understand astrology better. You understand your spiritual practice better. You understand life better. You're more at peace with what's happening in life. You're not trying to avoid things like Saturn or a difficult Mars. You are learning to work with them. This is what happens uh, when you work with Jupiter. Okay. Well, take care. It was a pleasure to speak with you again. And um, I wish you well and all the blessings on this path as you learn to explore uh, these planets of yours. Mm -hmm.